Hi. Welcome to Talking and Reading from Japan. I'm your host, Demi Woods. Here, I read an episode from my books and talk about it or anything that I feel like talking to you. I hope you enjoy with me. Today, I'm gonna read an episode in one of the books I wrote titled An Old Tree in Kyoto. Today's episode is called Where is the Certificate? This is about a card game tournament at junior high school. Where is the certificate? When I was in junior high school, there was a tournament of the Japanese classic card game. 100 cards were laid out before competitors, and each card had an ancient Japanese poem written on it. A teacher read 100 poems one by one, and competitors picked the corresponding card. The one who got the most cards would be a winner. The game isn't as simple as it sounds. While a poem reader reads the whole poem, only the latter half of the poem is written on the card. To pick a card fast before it's taken by your rivals, you memorize the whole poem. The instant the top of a poem is read, you recall the poem's latter half, find the card it's written among the laid 100 cards, and pick it. Because my family had the game at home and played it occasionally, the poems were quite familiar to me. I was able to memorize all 100 poems easily before the tournament. That let me beat a competitor one after another, as by the time the teacher read through a first verse, the card of the poem's yet unread latter half was already in my hand. At the finals, I even beat the smartest girl at school and won the tournament. I came home with great joy and told my mother I had won. Her response was, where is the certificate? According to her, without a certificate or a diploma, there is no way to show people the result. Thus, winning is pointless. She urged me to have a teacher issue the certificate and asked the teacher. A few days later, I received a makeshift paper for the certificate. The beautiful paper was decorated proudly in a frame by my mother. That was today's episode. Um, this uh, game of Japanese classic poems <clears throat> um, was uh, uh, is consists uh, consists of um, one hundred poems called tanka. Um, I. I'm sure you've heard of haiku before because haiku 
has become quite popular. And uh, haiku is、uh, a Japanese old、um, style、uh, poem that、uh, consists of five, seven, five syllables. And tanka is a long version. Of haiku, and it consists of five, seven, five, seven, seven, five syllables. And、um, <clears throat> this card game、uh, features one hundred. Old poems by 100 poets each, and it's assembled.、Uh, it was assembled about、uh, in 13th century or something. It was quite、uh, old poems, all of them, and.、Um, The the trick is、um, the card cards one hundred cards don't um、uh, don't represent the whole poets. I mean um. As I read my episode, each card has only the latter half of the poem, but、uh, the reader starts with the top of the poem, which means the first、um, first part. Of the poem, so、uh, as soon as you hear the f- first part of the poem, you need to take, you need to pick a card that has the latter part of the poem written. So the key to win this game is、uh, memory. You need to memorize the whole one hundred poems to pick them faster. Than other players, so、uh, I should give you a little example. Example. Okay.、Um, this is my favorite poem in that in those one hundred poems. <coughs>、um, it's. Sounds like this. Waga iho wa miyako no tatsumi shikazo sumu yo ujiyama to hito wa yu nari. This poem is written by Kisen Hoshi. He is a, a, a priest. In the thirteenth century, and uh, um, the meaning of this poem is like、um, my、mm, my shabby 
shack is located in the in the edge of the city and I live here secretly far away from the far far away from the world to um almost hiding so people call me uh, an outsider people call me um, outsider and lonely um, secretive um, man hiding in a deserted shack the meaning is like about that and when you hear the top of the poem, Wagayuho wa, you look for a card that has Yohujiyamato written on it. And you pick it. And for some reason, I was really good at it. And um, I won the tournament. But um, there was no certificate or anything. Anything that proved I had won. So my mother was so unsatisfied with it although i actually won and she believed it but she needed a proof to show to tell everyone that i won so she didn't um, uh, she didn't uh, praise me or she didn't show any appreciation of my winning for my winning and she just uh, kept grumbling about no certificate given to me and she demanded <laughs> the certificate and so I reluctantly asked my teacher to make it and received a makeshift certificate it was actually a, just only a piece of paper but it had uh, the it had my name on it along with the name of the tournament and that made my mother happy she was happier 
than the fact I won. So the certificate won. I lost in the competition of making my mother happy. <laughs> um, sometimes um, we often hear um, a parent talks about she or his her or his uh, child that they are proud of them. Especially in the movies or in the um, TV dramas, we often hear a parent telling their children that they they are proud of them, and I. Whenever I hear that lines, I can't help feeling envious because my mother had never told me that she is proud of me. I she, I often did good things to her, but she didn't admire me. For instance, um, I, um, Bring, I bring all a report cards and show her and she goes good uh, keep on doing this next time and she didn't tell me uh, you did a good job or I'm proud of you. She she had never given those words to me. She just um, showed my OA report card to my grandparents and Brag, bragged about um, how um, how excellently she raised me, and she put that report card on the altar of. Uh, of a uh, uh, of local god, and she said thanks to that local god on the altar of my um, house. So, while she did those things, she showed it around the people and showed it to God. She 
didn't um, appreciate me who actually achieved that deed. She didn't, um, she wasn't, um, um, grateful for me. And this is, um, this certificate of this game tournament was only one example. Um, whatever I tried hard and achieved something, um, she didn't praise me anything. So I uh, honestly, I'm tired of those years, and uh, recently I finally um, cut off my relationship with my mother, and I hadn't, I haven't seen her in years, for years. So I don't need to feel frustrated by my mother's attitude toward me, but um, the thing is it's funny because uh, even now, unconsciously, I um, I live I live with my partner, and unconsciously I often tell uh, ask my partner to to praise me when I do something um, something good to him or I um, I I do something um, n not uh, not that big things but something I'm proud of myself, then I just can't help telling my partner that, uh, isn't it something? Don't you praise me? Or do you appreciate me? Or uh, I'm good. Am I, or something? So I just, um, it's my mouth, um, um, spews those, um, annoying, uh, requirements of praise to my partner. So I think my those annoying habits habit is um, stems from my those experiences which was was uh, nurtured by 
my mother. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for listening. I hope you come back here soon and join me again. I'm Hidemi Woods. Thanks again. Until next time, take care and be well.